Um, it's my privilege to bring up our last speaker. Um, and Mr. Uh, Stan Rodriguez is a tribal council member of the Ipai Nation of Santa Isabel. He holds a doctorate of education from UC San Diego. His work examines the Kumeyaay heritage language, learning. Dr. Rodriguez is executive director of the Kumeyaay Community College and teaches Kumeyaay language, culture, ethnobotany, and history. He is a traditional Kumeyaay singer. Also, we give you Dr. Stan Rodriguez to close us out. Okay, Ipeyama, Tipe Cham, Stamina Chuhina, Makopai, Wisquana, Pele Hilikoe, Awo, Yashkal, Kushawa Pi. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stan Rodriguez. I'm Ipai Kumyai from the San Isabel Reservation. And first of all, Assemblyman Ramos, it's good to see you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your song. And when you were talking about, uh, when you were talking about the, the mountain sheep, with, with our people, we say that uh, the mountain sheep is an animal that teaches us because the mountain sheep lives in a place that there's very little food, very little water, and it teaches us how to overcome adversity, how to be strong. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for sharing that part. For the rest of the speakers here, I just want to say uh, it's been an honor to listen to all of you. And many of you, I've known you for, for, for many years, some of you since I was in my early 20s. And uh, I'm not going to say how old I am, but uh, it's been a while. So thank you all for, for sharing. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, Father Sarah and, and, and the missions and, and, and what the statue means. And if you look behind me, if you look behind me, you see an a, a, a engraving of when the, my people, the Kumeyaay people, attacked the mission in San Diego and killed Father Jaime and two other people. And there were reasons for that. So to talk a little bit about that is to talk about you know, what happened here in the Californias. So the version or memory of Father Sarah has been this uh, romanticized uh, fallacy of him bringing God to the people. And just those words in itself denote uh, so much, I mean, it's such a negativity for our native people. They're saying that we're not even human beings, that we had nothing before they came. And that is a, that is a total lie. But let's examine what, what actually took place. So when Father Sarah came, he wasn't the bringer of all of this. And when we talk about the missions, as Kutcha was talking about, it goes back over 200 years before he, was, before he even came to uh, the Californias. And it started off with what was happening in Mexico. Well, what was happening in the Americas? There was an invasion by Spaniards. And I think it's important to note this. The Spaniards did not defeat the native people. It was native people fighting other native people. They were the ones, they were playing one side against the other. So they toppled the Aztec, the Inca empires. And what they did was they saved the nobles. They saved some of the nobles. And what they did was they gave orders to the nobles and the people who were under them, they were used to um, um, carrying out the, the orders of the nobles, but instead of the, the, the resources going to them and back to the communities, it went to the Spaniards and then, and then to Spain. So this kept going on and on until uprisings took place. And the first one was a Mishta uprising in Mexico, and this was from 1540 to 1542. And this pitted the uh, Kashkan people against the Tlaxcalan and Aztec people that were now uh, fighting with the Spaniards. So that lasted for a couple of years, but then another uprising took place. It was a war. And this war lasted for 50 years. And this was the Chichimeca War up in the northern uh, provinces of Mexico. And what happened was the Spaniards almost lost the war. It got that bad. But in uh, 1580, um, 1584, 
the bishop of uh, of uh, <coughs> the bishop of Guadalajara, he came up with the idea. He called for a Christian remedy, and this started what was to be known as a weaponizing of Christianity. So what they were going to do was they were going to come, and and they had two hundred years to perfect this before Father Sarah came into the picture. Of they would go into indigenous communities, and one of the reasons why that the Chichimeca War, the Spaniards almost lost, was because of what what, what they had was um, um, it was uh, decentralized governments. So and the people. Uh, the people were, were, were very mobile, moving from place to place, just like our peoples here in California. So they had a difficult time with them. They couldn't just take over a city and take over the people. So this is how they were going to do it with the missions. They were going to pull the people in, subjugate the people, teach them rudimentary skills, uh, teach them the, the Catholic faith, and they were going to, like I said, teach them rudimentary skills in anticipation of Spanish colonists arriving. So when Father Sarah came, came into California at, in 1769, one of the things that the Spaniards were concerned about was incursion by both Russia and England. There was uh, a, a lot of trapping that was done by Tlingits from, from the north that were coming down uh, for otters. So the Spaniards were concerned and they wanted to build up their outposts. They initially wanted to put a mission up in Monterey. They wanted to skip San Diego, but they decided that was too far of a jump from Laredo. So they, they went to San Diego instead. That first mission in uh, 1769 was put right next to uh, a very large Kumiai village called Kosai. Some people call Kosoi, it means the dried place. So what happened was the soldiers it, from the beginning were molesting women, children. And, and the way that they did this, the way that they, did these things was a the way that they did this was they would take the children. When they take the children, the women would follow. And when the women would follow, the men would follow. So they would put the women and the children, they would separate everybody. It was much easier to control the people. Like I said, they've had over 200 years uh, to perfect this model. So when this happened, they killed the chiefs, the chief uh, who was protesting, uh, uh, what Spanish soldiers were attempting to do to his wife. So then they moved the, the community, well, they moved the, the mission a couple miles up the river. So what happened was, what they would do is they would forcibly hold people there. They would, just like, just like what was said before, they would whip the people, they would use the women and children for sex, and uh, they didn't care about life. They would just get more people. So two people escaped, and when they came back, they came back with hundreds of Kumeyaay warriors. So on the night of November 5th, 1775, hundreds of Kumeyaay warriors descended, half surrounded the Presidio and half around the mission. They attacked the mission, burned it to the ground, dragged Father Jaime out, and the last words that were recorded him saying was, mi hijos, or my children. He was found guilty of crimes against Kumia humanity and executed, along with two other people. This started off uh, a wave of, of reprisals, but the Kumia held their ground. If any of you ever been to San Diego, anything east of El Cajon was considered enemy territory. So our people held most of our traditional territory. And the Kumia people, we are on both sides of the border. We're not only in San Diego and Imperial Counties, but we're also in Baja, California, Mexico. There's six Kumeyaay reservations in Baja, another 12 in San Diego County. So as these things started going on, the Quetzal and Kum Desert Kumeyaay attacked the missions that were on the Colorado River, destroyed those. The mission in Santa Catarina and Baja was destroyed. The mission in La Mission in between Tijuana and Ensenada was attacked, destroyed. These things were happening, going on and on. Our people resisted, our people resisted um, in, encroachment by them. They wanted to use us for slaves and, 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 and we fought against it. We continued to fight. So when we talk about Father Sarah and you know, his contributions to that, he was an architect. Well, no, he was just a tool. He was just a tool of this. 
and you know, for him to be uh, cantonized, I was there uh, up north in, in the Bay Area when um, many of us uh, natives were there at that meeting. And we were against that. We were against that. There were a few that, that were for it, but they did it anyway. And the thing is, if Father Cheryl was so pure, so holy, why did he come with soldiers? Why did he come with soldiers? That is the thing that, you know, a lot of people don't, you know, you know, don't, don't, don't really understand. And, and, you know, people, you know, get mad about, hey, these statues are getting toppled. It's what it represents. It, it's what it represents to, to, I mean, the truth. We're talking about the truth and being able to say the truth and what has really happened. You know, when, when we take a look at the missions, you know, we, we take a look at a romanticized version of, you know, Spanish colonialism and how it was all peaceful out here and what, what has taken place. But the reality was this was a time of, of, of pain, of sorrow, of resistance for the people. And, 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 and it's not in our history books. It's, it, you know, when, when uh, Dr. Rizin was talking about, Dr. Baldy Rizin was talking about, um, you know, her, uh, you know her, her fourth grader, you know, and doing the mission project. I have a son who, who turned 10. He, he was in the fourth grade and we're looking forward to doing the actual, I mean, replica of the San, San Diego mission with the burning and, and all that. But with COVID-19, they closed down schools before we could do it and uh, they got away. So, but uh, you know, the truth is, is so important. And you know, when, when some people talk about, well, that's just the, the historic, you know, that's just history. That's not, you know, it's not what's done today. Let me tell you guys something. Let me tell you all something about this. You know, when you, you know, I heard people talking about the mission bells. One time, uh, my family, we went uh, to Sonora, to the land of the Kumkak. People know them as the Seris. They're very proud people. Their language is, you know, uh, almost everybody speaks the language. They still practice fishing. They live in isolated areas. They're, and, and uh, you know, they, they, they're, they're just an incredible group of people. But one of the things that we noticed in the daytime, we heard bells ringing. Well, there's Christian missionaries, evangelists, that have put up a church out there. And they ring, they ring the bell five times a day. And each time the people, the, the people go to the mission and they attend service. What is going on? What is going on with the people? You know, again, indoctrination. Indoctrination is taking place. What? So indoctrination is taking place. Another thing that is happening is, you know, when, when we talk about, you know, the apology that, that has been given, you know, that, you know, you, you hear happening, you know, with the Catholic Church, apologizing for that. I got to say, apology means nothing. How about the actions? When we talk about, you know, the devastating impact that the missions had on people, if you notice almost all the groups who had been, um, who had encountered the missions or who were part of the missions are not federally recognized. If the Catholic Church really believed and you know what, we need to do the right thing. They would give that land back to those people and help to secure land so that they could have reservations and help them for federal recognition. This is the truth. And you know, in, in San Diego, there are two groups that were not federally recognized. One was, you know, again, you know, the Lucenos up in San Luis Rey and the others were Kumyais from the San Diego mission. Through diaspora, I mean, they just, you know, they just went into the population because without a land base, you are like a tree without roots. So the last thing I wanted to say is that education is important. We need to be able to teach our, our people. We need to be able to teach them the truth. People should not be afraid of the truth. People should honor the truth. People should honor knowledge. And that's one of the reasons why we started Kumiai Community College, the 12 Kumiai bands, in San Diego, working with the six bands in Baja, so that we can teach our story, so that we can, you know, 
protect our language, our songs, our culture, our history. This is something that is so important for our people. The, you know, uh, one of the, the things that I'll always remember about the Catholic Church is one time I was in a Kumia reservation in Baja and uh, one of the ladies, she passed away, she died, one of my in-laws. And uh, she was a Catholic. So she wanted a Catholic priest to say something at her, at her funeral. So we drove down to the nearby town and went to the Catholic church. And we asked the priest, would you, could you come up here and you know, say, you know, you know, say some words for her? And the Catholic priest looked at all of us with disdain and said in Spanish that he was going to be officiating at a wedding and he didn't have time because it would dirty his robes. So then one of the elders asked, could we at least have some holy water so we can put that on? And he looked so taken back by it. Oh gosh, really? You want me? So he got some water, said a quick prayer, and we left. So when we talk about things that happen, those things are still happening today. And until we realize that, until we, we say, you know, we, we let people know what the truth is, and until we start teaching our people, our, the people are going to be blinded, they're going to be lost. So thank you for letting me share. Thank you very much.